Etienne Chisekedi wa Mulumba was arguably the most popular opposition figure in Congo. He was also the longest standing opposition leader, mainly because he stood up to three different presidencies. First, he stood up to the Mobutu presidency, and then he stood up to the Kabilas, both the father and the son. In his lifetime, Chisekedi was exiled, got arrested multiple times, and he also survived multiple assassination attempts. His political philosophy was very simple, and it is usually summarized in this one phrase, le peuple d'abord. This is a French phrase meaning the people first or the people come first. But the most interesting thing about Chisekedi and perhaps the most controversial thing about him as well is the fact that he was not just a political opponent. At some points, he also served in the government. He especially served in the government of President Mobutu, against whom he was known to be the main political opponent. This in itself is telling a lot about Chisekedi, but I believe that a closer look into his political journey would also reveal something more. But before we continue, hi everybody, my name is Felicity and welcome to Congo Talks 243. Three. If you are new, feel free to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. So let's start from the beginning. Etienne Chisekedi was born in Kananga, a city in the Kasai region of the DRC. He grew up to pursue his studies, first near his hometown and later on in Kinshasa, where he obtained a doctorate diploma in law. He was the first known Congolese to have gotten a doctorate in law. And because he completed his studies around the same time that Congo became independent, he got involved into politics very early on. So he is definitely one of the earliest political figures of the post-colonial DRC. As a law student, Chisekedi served as an advisor to the newly created Mouvement National Congolais, or the MNC. Now, the MNC was Congo's first nationwide political party co-founded by Patrice Lumumba. He served in this position between 1958 to 1959, and towards the end of 1959, the MNC decided to split into two separate wings. There was the unitarist wing known as the MNCL, which was led by Patrice Lumumba, and there was the federalist wing wing known as the MNCK led by Albert Kalonji. Now, Albert Kalonji from the MNCK, which was the Federalist Wing, went on later to lead a secessionist movement in the Kasai region of the DRC. At that time, it was known as South Kasai. So this movement happened between 1960 to 1962. Briefly during that period of time, Chisekedi went on to work for Albert Kalonji in South Kasai. While he was there, he served as a minister of justice before the movement was finally destroyed by by the central government. So up until now, we can conclude that Chisekedi was more or less a federalist because he associated himself with the federalist wing of the MNC. But his journey as a political opponent really did not start until President Mobutu came into power. Now, the presidency of Mobutu was a very, it was a very tricky time, especially if you were in the opposition. We are talking about someone that was worshipped like a god here. <laughs> In addition to that, he was the absolute darling of the West in this Cold War period. So going against Mobutu was almost suicidal. But either way, we cannot really speak about Chisekedi without speaking about the presidency of Mobutu. And this will be the focus of the rest of this video mainly. President Mobutu seized power in a military coup in 1965. And during that period of time, Chisekedi was already a member of parliament. According to Chisekedi's own account, Mobutu actually promised to collaborate with the existing parliament after taking power. And one of the first things that he did after coming into power was to ask the existing parliament to nominate one person from each of the Congolese provinces who would be part of the new Mobutu government. This is how Chisekedi was chosen to represent his province of South Kasai and ultimately joined the Mobutu government. After he joined, he initially served as a minister of the interior. But very early on, Mobutu already started showing signs that he was not really interested in a democratic system. I mean, the way in which he took power really could not allow anybody to function in a democratic system anyway. That's the result of military coups and stuff like that. But I digress. So immediately after the members of parliament were chosen, Mobutu decided to suspend the parliament. He also suspended all political parties that existed in the previous government. So no more political parties. And as a response to this, Chisekedi decided to collaborate with other people to put pressure on Mobutu so that he can revert to democracy. This resulted to Mobutu assigning Chisekedi to develop a new constitution. This new constitution 
constitution was developed and it was published in 1967. However, something was very particular about this new constitution developed by Chisekedi. What was particular about the 1967 constitution that Chisekedi developed is the fact that it almost overlooked Mobutu's efforts to get rid of political parties. Instead, the new constitution limited the number of political parties to two. This, Chisekedi explained, was done to avoid the formation of political parties based on ethnic belonging while also respecting democratic values. Now, about a month before the release of the 1967 constitution, Chisekedi himself participated in the creation of a ruling party called the Mouvement Populaire de la Révolution, or the NPR. He created the NPR in collaboration with President Mobutu as well as other political actors. Now, note that the NPR was never created to be the sole political party, considering the fact that it was created before the constitution was published or released in 1967. But immediately after the 1967 constitution was published, Chisekedi was removed from being Minister of the Interior to being Minister of Justice and then to being Minister of Planning. And by late 1969, Chisekedi, as well as every other person that had any type of influence on Mobutu, were sent away to work in embassies. And this is where things really started shifting. In May 1970, while Chisekedi and all others were sent away, Mobutu decided to amend the 1967 constitution by removing the article that allowed the multiplicity of political parties. The ruling party, the NPR, was now institutionalized and became synonymous with the state. And from this point onward, any movement to challenge the NPR was violently suppressed. And one of those movements was one co-founded by Chisekedi. In 1982, Etienne Chisekedi co-founded a movement called the Union for Democracy and Social Progress, or the UDPS as it is known in French. This movement was, of course, against Mobutu's constitutional amendment, which only legitimized Mobutu's one-party state. So this movement saw Chisekedi jailed multiple times for publicly criticizing Mobutu's regime. But with each of these arrests, Chisekedi became a little bit more popular. This popularity reached one of its highest points in 1988. And what happened during this period of time is that Chisekedi actually decided to do one of the most reckless acts ever recorded in the history of Congo under the Mobutu regime. He decided to hold a public gathering to commemorate the death of Patrice Lumumba. Now, for those of you guys who know the story of Congo a little bit, you would know that Mobutu had little roles here and there to play in whatever unfolded around the death of Patrice Lumumba. So holding this public gathering to commemorate the death of Lumumba could only vex Mobutu even more. Anyway, thousands of Congolese decided to turn up to this public meeting, but as you would imagine, it was very violently suppressed. Many people were killed, others were injured, some others disappeared. Chisekedi himself was beaten and thrown into prison unconscious, and a few days later he was dragged from prison to the state security court to be tried, and thousands of Congolese people went on the street to support him and there were clashes everywhere. Things got so heated up in 1988 that Chisekedi was actually quoted saying that he was desisting from all political activity. So these clashes went on until the early 1990s, and what happened from this point onward is the fact that Mobutu now lost support from his Western allies, and with this lack of support from the West and a growing opposition at home, Mobutu was forced to legalize opposition. In April 1990, Mobutu announced that he would allow multi-party elections in the following year. Now, the transition to political pluralism in the 1990s was actually done through the creation of a national conference called la Conference Nationale Souveraine, the CNS. So, the CNS drew up an act of transition which created an interim parliament. But before it could get off the ground, the CNS was repeatedly suspended and restarted by President Mobutu. And because of this, in 1992, the then president of the CNS, Archbishop Laurent Mosengo, had the CNS declare itself sovereign. What this did is it limited the ability of President Mobutu to suspend the CNS. So anyway, after Mobutu's announcement to allow multi-party elections, Chisekedi and other major political actors decided to organize opposition in the Katanga province. In that time, it was known as Shaba. This opposition was known as the Sacred Union. Because elections were coming up, the Sacred Union decided to back Chisekedi as their main opposition candidate to face President Mobutu. But by November 1991, there was some trouble in the opposition as some of the main leaders decided to ally themselves with the Mobutu government. One of these was Jean Gunza Carlebond, who was named as Prime Minister, and another one was Gabriel Kyungu Wakumwanza, who was named as the governor of the Katanga province. A very unfortunate event 
unfolded as a result of this disagreement within the opposition I, I will save that for another video in the future because I feel like it's very interesting to also have a look at what unfolded in, in Congo at that time but anyways after these nominations the CNS decided to intervene by appointing Chisekedi as the Prime Minister on three separate occasions and each of these times he was dismissed by Mobutu who then replaced him with other candidates that he chose so the working relationship between Chisekedi and Mobutu was on and off until Mobutu was kicked out in a coup that was led by President Laurent Désiré Kabila in 1997 so this was Kabila the father Chisekedi on his side continued his fight for democracy because the environment under President Laurent Désiré Kabila was almost the same as it was under Mobutu in the sense that they both restricted political organization even though ideologically speaking Kabila and Mobutu were a little different we will get into this when we look at the story of President Laurent Désiré Kabila hopefully soon so President Laurent Désiré Kabila was unfortunately assassinated in 2001 and he was succeeded by his son President Joseph Kabila and like I said in the beginning Chisekedi stood up to the three presidents so he continued his fight even under President Joseph Kabila in 2006 he actually boycotted an election because he believed that it was rigged already and he did not want to give any type of legitimacy to an election that was already rigged finally in 2011 he presented himself as a presidential candidate but he was not successful but of course the transparency of Congolese elections are always questionable so that was all for today's video guys if you liked it give it a thumbs up and also let me know in the comment what you think have you heard about Etienne Chisekedi before is this the first time that you heard about him what do you know about him that I may not have covered and there is a lot that I believe I have not I have not covered I really hope you enjoyed today's video and that you learned one thing or two about Etienne Chisekedi as you know our goal on this channel is to unpack the Congolese history and culture and lifestyle so I love doing stuff like this I always hope that you will use this knowledge as a starting point to get to know a bit more about every topic or every figure that I speak about on this channel thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys very soon in the next videos bye